Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Saturday Morning Collectibles. This is probably the most excited I've ever been to share a video because I get to share with you my experience at Lexington Comic Con where I got to meet Kevin Eastman and Ben Bishop. Uh, so I've taken quite a few B-roll uh, videos and some hunt perspectives from comics and toys. So I hope you enjoy that and please stay to the end where I'll share you the haul video of what I was able to pick up and also all the awesome sketches that Kevin Eastman and Ben Bishop was able to do. This booth was loaded with good stuff, uh, especially it had some loose Star Wars figures there, um, some very old ones. I thought that was pretty interesting. Check out that Jurassic Park complete lunchbox. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time. Ninja Turtle case, $35. I was tempted to get it, but it was a little beat up. So I saw a few more there. Um, I don't know if I'll show them later in the video, but I was very interested in that one. Bosk. $80, that seems a little expensive to me, but uh, big turnout here as you can see. I love what this guy was doing with his Lego sets. I didn't end up getting Donatello. Uh, there was just so many cool characters to choose from there. Great booth. You don't see a complete box set of Ninja Turtle cards like this. Um, $75 a little too much, but I just thought it was awesome to run across this again. Three number ones, or three number two number threes and a number one. This guy was loaded with awesome comics from the Ninja Turtles Mirage line. You'll see here in a second. Uh, just he's got some really good ones in this box. The previous shot I showed showed on his rack. He had a lot of them. There's a number two third print. Uh, let's see. There's a number one Archie. $150. I haven't seen that ever in person. He had two of them. There's another. There's a number six that I've been looking for forever. I'll take out a couple of them here so I can pick out the best one. Number five for $40 is a really great price. I already have one or I'd have picked one up. There's the second one. He had most of the ones through the first 10. Um, the previous shot showed the ones on the rack. He had one, two, three, and four. He had a number one first print, which... That was the second one I saw that day, but you don't see those ever. I was blown away by just how many vintage carded figures I saw at this show. There was a Dick Tracy. Uh, this booth had a lot of the old Star Wars uh, toys on card. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen any on card. The previous booth I saw them had loose, but um, on card, that's crazy. There's a Dengar for 470 Lando, Han... There's some G.I. Joe's still on card. This was an awesome booth to run across. It's always a good day when you run across some Ninja Turtles mint on card. This booth had one that I was interested in, Zach the Neutrino. I didn't end up getting it. I think they were charging $75. I just wasn't willing to spend that much money at that time for that guy. Uh, but it, I definitely was tempted. Um, there's a... Uh, Vintage Donatello hat that that I almost got as well. Bucky O'Hare. I'm really looking for Alligator. They had quite a few, but they did not have Alligator, unfortunately. But it was still really cool to run across these. I want to take some shots here at Kevin Eason's booth. That Leonardo right there is just awesome. He was charging two hundred dollars for it, but I think it was totally worth it if you're a Leo fan. Someone had already taken the Donatello. Super jealous of that. Um, coming up here, I want you guys to look at the NECA punk frogs and the, the art he did. I don't think I've ever seen him do art for the punk frogs, but I thought that was so awesome that he had that.
absolute pleasure finally meeting you guys. Absolutely. Oh, appreciate pleasure. it. Thank you very much. Very nice to meet you. Can you do a photo with me? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the toys I was able to pick up first, and then the comics, and then I'll wrap up with some of the sketches that Kevin Eastman and Ben Bishop was able to do for me. So the first toy I was able to pick up was this awesome Lego set. You guys saw this on video, but Donatello. And this, uh, let's see, so this is by a company called Mike's Minifigs LLC. I'll put their information in the description, but uh, if you guys could want to take a picture that you can get his info off that card as well uh, but I'll put his info again in the description of the video but man this thing just looks so cool how they've been able to to pose him and get him they've stood him on a Lego set so he's not gonna fall over um, the card is from the uh, first movie in the back is from the Ninja Turtle uh, Mirage comic number one which I thought that was so cool um, they had oh there's a little pizza there too he had a lot more, as you saw in the video. I was tempted to get a lot. I think he, and they were pretty reasonable. I think they were like five bucks a piece. Um, even the little card at the top's unpunched. I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> Neat little touch. Anyway, I love this. This is going to look great in my display case with my other turtles. Um, I was able to also get um, Super 7 Thundercats Slythe. This guy is massive, and as soon as I saw it, I've seen a couple other videos a few months ago on it. My like, man, that looks really awesome. If I ever see this guy, I'll probably end up biting a bullet and go ahead and getting this thing. And um, so glad I did. I have Mumra, uh, Glow in the Dark from Super 7, but I'm not going to open it just because it's an exclusive to, I think, Entertainment Earth. No, 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 Big Bag Toy Store. But I'm not going to open it. Um, but this guy, I will. And I have lion -O and Chitar on the way as well. So, I'll probably do an unboxing of this guy later. And is it fair that this guy might end up in my top 10 for the year if he came out last year? I'm going to say yes because I got him this year. So, I didn't have him last year to put in my top 10. So, I'm going to make that exception. He may not, but just judging already by the detail and the size of this guy in the box, he probably will. Um, okay, that was it for the toys. Not a whole lot of toys uh, that I picked up. There was obviously a lot at the show, but none that, uh, not more than that that I picked up. So you guys saw one of these on the video. I didn't end up picking this one up that I, that I showed on the video. The price was right, but it was just really beaten up, and uh, it, it was I believe it was in pretty poor condition. So I was hoping to find another one. I saw two more while I'm at the show floor. One was really expensive, so I passed on it. And I was able to find this one for $40. Great condition, but it's one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles carrying cases. Um, I don't, I don't remember if I ever had this as a kid, but it's still really cool, and it's going to be a great display piece. I feel like in my room, um, but yeah, it can hold up to 20 figures. So I imagine as a kid, all these loose Ninja Turtles and and uh, weapons accessories would have been great to have this to carry around. But there's two trays. There's one that looks like this, and one on the back that uh, looks the same. So you put your figures right here and your accessories here, and uh, it's just really nice. I love this thing. So I was happy that I ran across one. Uh, the comics, I was able to get this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Power Rangers crossover. And it has Donatello, my favorite turtle, holding the helmet of the Pink Ranger, my favorite Power Ranger. Um, well, she's the one I had a crush on. I loved uh, the Pink Power Ranger. Thought she was so pretty as a kid. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, but I'd, I'd say the Green Ranger is probably my favorite. Um, but yeah, I, I love the Pink Ranger. Um, I was able to get Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 22 with Donatello on the cover. I've thought about getting this now for a while. And I don't know, it's so far down the line, number 22, that I just never have gotten it. And even though Donatello is my favorite turtle, uh, it, just, it hasn't been a priority yet. But for $15, good, good... Um, it's a good quality comic, so um, I was perfectly fine spending $15 on this to finally have it in my collection. Again, it's Donatello, so can't go wrong with Donatello. And then lastly, you saw this on the video, but I finally was able to get a copy of number six. So now all I need for the first 12 is number one, three, and four. Um, so that, that'll be a while because that, those are not cheap. 
they had a few there at the, um, the show, and I was able to pan over a few of them. But I would hate to know how much they were charging for those. It would have been crazy. Uh, at Ben Bishop's booth, I was able to get one of these... Um, it's not a long box, but you put your last Ronin comics in it. Uh, it can fit up to 12. And the cool thing was they had three there. One was already signed. I had already He had already drawn Leonardo. One he had already drawn Casey. I'm like, man, I want him to draw Donatello. So they had one that he hadn't drawn on yet, and I was able to get him sketch Donatello for me and sign it. So that'll be a cool little memento for me um, with my last Ronin um, books that I put in there. I have more than 12, so I'm going to have to narrow it down. All right, now let's get to the sketches. First off, I want to show... I put this on my Instagram account, so if you guys follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this already. But last minute, I'm like, I'm going to bring my vintage Donatello toy that I had as a kid. I have so many, as you see right here in the cabinet. All of these, at the exception of maybe two or three, I had as a child that I was able to keep. So all those have been played with by me and my brother, and we... Fortunately, kept him. And uh, Donatello, this one, it's cool because he's even got his legs super glued. Uh, it's, yeah, I love that. And then Kevin was able to sign his name right there. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a cool little memory that I have um, with this one. And comic-wise goes, let's see. Actually, before I show you the comics that they signed and sketched, because I'm a fan club member or a member of the Kevin Eastman's fan club, I was able to get this poster and he signed and sketched it as well. I thought that was just really cool that they were doing that. And it, it's a great drawing by Kevin. So I love this sketch. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, okay, so comics. I brought four with me. The first one that I'm going to show is from the Archie line. It has no insignificance whatsoever outside of probably me and maybe whoever else likes this cover. But Leatherhead is my favorite villain from the comics and the toy line and the cartoon line. Um, so I had this, I've had this for a while. Um, I also have the one from my, from my childhood as well, but it's pretty beaten up. But I was able to get this a while back and it's, it's in really good condition. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have Kevin sign and sketch this just for, you know, because I love the cover. And I love Leatherhead. He signed it in silver. It's kind of hard to see on camera. But you see Leatherhead, or you see the turtle head sketch there, and you see his signature here. So, yeah, another awesome memory that I'm going to have. And these last two, oh, these are, these are some of the best. So the first one I'm going to show is a, an exclusive cover drawn by Ben Bishop. This came out last summer at the San Diego Comic Con. It's an exclusive to that convention. I was able to get it through IDW's website, and it's a copy of number three with Michelangelo sitting there in lava. But anyway, I had Kevin sign it first, and I said, hey, can you sketch the last, a Last Ronin sketch versus a Turtle Head sketch? And he was able to do that, and he, he signed it for me. And that, man, that sketch just looks awesome. And then Ben signed it over here in orange um, to match the kind of tone of the, the, the cover. And he's, he signed that as well. They are both just super talented. We obviously know Kevin Eastman's super talented, right? On, on hand drawn. But Ben, he's an awesome up and coming artist that if you haven't heard of him, um, start looking him up because he's going to come big on the scene. He's already big on the scene, but um, great sketch by both. And lastly, that I have right now in hand, I ordered this off Kevin Eastman's site. Um, it, it came on as an exclusive fan club offer that you could get. And it was a, a copy of number three. I believe it's number three. It might be number four. Um, but it was a, a blank black cover of The Last Ronin. And I had Kevin sketch it. So when I bought it off the website, by the way, it already had a signature by Tom Waltz and Kevin Eastman. So they had already signed it. So I couldn't send this off to, um, to CGC because they would give me a, a green label, I think, because um, it had been, um, I don't know what specifically the green label means off the top of my head, but um, it wouldn't have gotten a gold label. So I had Kevin, since he already signed it, I had him sketch. Again, the last Ronin sketch looks, looks great. 
and I had Ben Bishop, ben Bishop do the same sign and sketch. And this just pops off this black cover. This will probably stay in my personal collection. Um, it's, it, this looks awesome, right? Yeah, it, I'll probably end up getting it sent off to CBCS at some point uh, because they will give you the gold label because they verify it um, without actually being an eyewitness. So as soon as they're able to take large comics like that, I'll be able to do it. Last I want to talk about, and I'm going to put a picture up right now of it, is I brought a copy of my number two second print that I had Kevin sign and sketch for me, and I did send that off to CGC. So that was the only thing I sent off to CGC. Uh, it's an immaculate condition on the, on the cover and on the back. The only problem is it has a printing defect on the bottom of the page uh, where there's two little, kind of like a little, I don't know, fangs looking almost, where it's, or it's, it, it's carved out of the pages. And um, I've been told, and I, after research, um, it looks like that CGC will not knock anything off of that. If so, it'll be very little, but I don't know for sure. So I'm a little nervous on what grade that'll get, but nonetheless, it's staying with me. I don't care what grade it really is. Selfishly, I'd like it to be a nine or above, you know, who wouldn't, right? But um, I just wanted it encapsulated as a display piece. So it'll still be staying with me. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you did, please make sure to leave a like, comment, and most importantly, make sure to subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out, and uh, there'll be more to come. We'll see you next time.